Thank you. Uh, I'm talking about our fight against super bad patterns in legacy labels apps. I'm Yasuko Oba. I'm living in Tokyo, Japan, and I'm a programmer. I have been using Ruby on Rails since 2006. And before that, I had been using Java for seven years and I have an experience of other languages too. And I'm president of Every Leaf Corporation in Japan. And please call me Oba-san, just Oba-san, or Yasuko-san, or Yasuko. Please do not call me Oba-san. <laughs> do, do you know the meaning of Oba-san? Um, <laughs> it's a bad name and for a middle-aged woman in Japan. <laughs> and please do not call me Oba-san. <laughs> it means an old lady in Japanese. So please just call me Oba-san or Yasuko-san. <laughs> My company is Everleaf Corporation, and uh, we develop web applications for our clients using mostly Ruby on Rails since 2007, so it's almost 10 years. And we are 90 people and 11 are women. <laughs> oh, thank you. So 57.9% 50, are women and 46.7% in engineering. So it's a bit worse than uh, Travis CI, but <laughs> I think this percentage is pretty higher than the average of Japanese technology uh, company. I started, to the uh, I started the company for myself to keep coding because I love to write code very much. But of course, I have to do management works these days too. I put stickers and bookmarks from my company uh, near the job sport. This is my family, and, and this is a picture of three-year-old uh, ceremony in a local shrine in last year when she was two, actually. They are uh, just flying to Singapore just now. And my hobby is karuta. I suppose nearly no one knows about Kauta. Uh, this picture is uh, from the movie of Chihaya Furu in Japan, which is kind of popular manga in Japan. And Kauta is a game that the reader reads the uh, poem and the player takes the read card, a red card, as fast as one can. And we have products for that in both iPhone and Android. Uh, there is an English name, the 100 Japanese poems, and here I can uh, demo. <laughs> like this, and this application and acts like the reader. So if you are interested in this game, please check it. Hello, Singapore. This is the first time for me to visit Singapore and of course attend Red Dot Ruby Conf. And this is the first time for me to travel uh, to a foreign country alone. And, and first time to have an English talk longer than lightning talks. So <laughs> thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here as a speaker and thank you so much, and this is a big adventure for me. Caution, <laughs> I might say a e or ma instead of well, so please be placed in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> and I might say ten instead of point for numbers, sorry about that. And uh, I have a lot of slides here, so maybe it might be a busy talk, sorry. Okay, <laughs> and the outline, I, the outline of my talk 
is here. I'm talking about two topics. The first topic is what we generally have to do to upgrade Ruby and Rails in legacy applications. And the second is introduction of four super bad patterns we found. Okay, let's start from Ruby and Rails migration. When I use the word migration, it means upgrading, upgrading, not the um, Rails migration of active record. And I won't talk about upgrading Rails from four to five. I think it's not difficult. This talk focuses on the most difficult part of Rails migration, which is from two to four. And how many people have used Rails 2? Thank you, maybe 30%. And how many people have experienced the migration from Rails 2 to 3 or 4 or 5? Thank you. Maybe 20% or less. Rails 2 had been used widely in Japan at least. So I'm afraid that many old Rails applications remain waiting to be upgraded. So you might meet them someday. So knowing about how to upgrade Ruby and Rails can be some help for that situation. Is it possible? Yes. Even with no old testing, the answer is still yes. We did this. But is it better to develop an application from scratch? It could be, but not always. I think an existing system being used reflects its real needs. It should be respected. You can never remove its essential complexity by programming techniques. That's why migration and refactoring make sense. Let's look at how to upgrade Ruby and Rails. Let me introduce our case. This talk is about the real experience of me. Our application is kind of health check service, B2B, and it had been handed over to our company from the other development company which originally developed the system. And this is our project goal. We have three applications. App one is for administration, app two is for end users, and app three is also for end users, but it, it's for English users. And app one and app two is using Rails 2.3.5 and Ruby 1.8.7. And app three is using Rails 3. And we need to uh, draw it away from Radian CMS and up to, uh, draw up to away from Radian CMS because it was uh, developed as an extension of Radian CMS. It's not that simple Rails application. And, and after that, uh, we need to upgrade to Rails 4.2.1 and Ruby 2.1 and merge the app 3 to app 2. And then we can do refactoring an ancient code. And we need to add many new features. The total schedule was like this. We did this from August in 2014 to May 2015. It took 11 months. And there are three companies and working around here. Our company is a black line. So the point is, we needed more than two months for migration. I drew a map of, on a map of Rails, of Rails migration. Let's start from Rails 2, and we are going to Rails 3. Between them, there is a river of tears. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, then and we are going to Rails 3.1. Between them, there are the mountains of modern Rails. And you can easily move to Rails 3.2. And please say goodbye to Ruby 1.8.7 here. And to go to Rails 4, there is a strong parameters force. <laughs> and now you are safe. Maybe you can uh, do upgrade faster more. This was a real migration schedule of us. We, upgra we upgraded two applications at the same time. The point is, we first upgrade Rails from two to three. This is hard. Then we upgrade the both Ruby to 2.1 and Rails to uh, 3.2. After that, we migrated to Rails 4. After that, we started to replace some gems, for, exam for example, file uploading, pagination, and so on. We have burden from Rails 1, actually. And if you have this kind of definition in your root RB, it is hard to remove it because we have to write each request specifically. To do that, ah, sorry. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, time. You need to uh, know all actions to do that. Let's see the roadmap from Rails 2 to 4, but we have no time, so I must hurry up. <laughs> and the river of tears. The first point is active record chainable query language. So you need to say goodbye to conditions and its friends. In Rails 2, we write like this to search, do search. And the condition is here, and its friends is here. And Conditions and its friends reside everywhere. And if you have some manipulation of conditions hash, it makes things worse. You need to know all sequels, sequels intended. Condition manipulation is like this. You uh, manipulate the string and the parameters separately. But now we can write like using where. And, and we, we found a small bad pattern here. And the prior developer liked the pattern to do search first and manipulate the result. But it's slow and hard to maintain, so we have to replace to chain queries instead of array concat. And the second point, an obtrusive JavaScript we write AJAX code if it uses all Rails helper methods. And the third point is helper and views. You need to add echo and rewrite all of all all old helpers which supporting which is supporting blocks and remove H and maybe need to fix W escaping sometimes. And the fourth point is validation. In Rails 2, we write validation like this, validates presence of, but 6C validation has come, so we can write like this now. And the other point, you can write your root RB much simpler, and you can use bundler. And there's a good point about commands. In Rails 2, uh, if you type Rails my app, it means Rails new my app. And you can uh, type Rails C or Rails C in after Rails 3, but in Rails 2, it was different. And what happens if you run Rails C in Rails 2 environment? So we don't have to create applications named C or CS anymore. <laughs> I used to create C or S applications twice in a day when, <laughs> when I go back from Rails 3 to Rails 2. It was very confusing. 
Okay, go to the next step. We are in rail three, and we have to go over the mountains of modern rails. The first point is asset pipeline, and, and move files and configure settings, and redesign CSS and JS file structures, and, good, and it's a good timing to use SCSS, and so on, and it takes much time. And you need to know all about all asset files, ideally. And the second point is default JS library is changed to be jQuery from prototype JS. So you need to rewrite JavaScript code if you are going to switch the library. Okay, then you can move to Rails 3.2. It's easy, and you can, now you can use plug and unique for distinct SQL. And uh, how about upgrading Ruby? And I think it's quite easy. You just need to care about string encoding and hash things. Okay, almost done. We are in Rails 3.2. Then the string parameters falls. Uh, security check went to controller from model. So you need to remove attract protected or attract accessible from your models and Add parameters, uh, add parameters check in your controllers. I love string, uh, strong, sorry, string, no, 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 st strong parameters. Because um, it's very flexible and readable. But uh, adding you know, parameter checks and adding strong, you know, supporting strong parameters is really hard and boring job. You need to know all parameters for all actions. And others, and maybe you want to use HAMO and replace, and of course you need to replace many gems and rewrite monkey patching in config initializers. And maybe you need to care about time zones. Gems, you need to replace gems through the Rails migration generally. I think in modern Rails, such as Rails 4 or 5, this is the main job of migration. It, it's kind of getting much easier. Congratulations, welcome to Rails 4 or 5. So how to upgrade Rails from 2? Conclusion. It's not only Rake Rails update. You need to ch change so many places. For that, you need to know, you need to know well about your app. And you need to know about all actions to remove default routing, routing and all parameters of each actions for applying strong parameters strictly. And, and you know, yeah, sorry, you need to know about right looks of all pages to fix helpers and escaping and problems. And you need to know all seekers to replace conditions and the chainable query. And you need to know all asset files for using assets pipeline effectively. And you need to know all monkey patching uh, making for making them work in modern Rails. So it's really tough, but not impossible, step by step. By the way, why didn't we have automated? Uh, why didn't we have automated tests? Because we had abandoned tests given from the prior company. So, according to the yesterday's talk, we had improved our tests, right? <laughs> and those tests did not make sense at that time. What to test were really wrong and or extremely difficult to change. I know this is dangerous. However, having bad tests could be even worse than having no tests. The testing company helped us a lot, fortunately. And we had tried to write feature specs, but the old Ruby version discouraged us. We <laughs> wanted to use Capybara, for example. 
<laughs> this is capybara. <laughs> so we decided to write many good specs after migration. After a year, we have many nice specs, happy. Okay, Wh what minutes I have? <laughs> All right? <laughs> Thank you. And, and let's move to a super bad pattern in layers. Our apps had been developed by beginners of Rails coming from Java. And we found many bad patterns there. We love good patterns. So we have easy access to the good patterns. How about bad patterns? If your team is modern and nice, it's hard to find natural bad patterns if you're in your daily work. It means you might miss some chance to notice what to avoid in programming. That's why I want to share these bad patterns here. In my opinion, natural bad patterns are like gold mines. In other words, I'm going to teach you to fish in cloudy swamps. And let me introduce four major bad patterns in the project. One, too many layers. Two, dreamy method. Three, global hash. Four, mass housing in one controller. One, too many layers. We have been fighting against too many classes and layers. I suppose it's familiar style in Java. And I, I like Java. <laughs> it was like this. Yeah. We have many thin active record models. And we have spaghetti fat non-active record classes. And these non-active active record classes uses active record models very procedure. And of course, controller is using these classes very procedure. And typical overmatch was one-to-one -one relation models, like company, company address, company something, so on. And these models are in relation of one-to-one. -one. So maybe there is no required to separate them. And the other overmatch is facade, proxy, so on. Mm, wrong reasons to separate models, which I, mm, I guess is here. They have slightly different meanings. The usage is different sometimes. And the worst one is, I would like to avoid changing existing classes for my safety. Oh my god. <laughs> Separating models costs very much. And facade, proxy, so on, uh, and it's no problem if it's well designed, of course. But in our case, this seemed to be the result of that result that developers could not use active record properly. They, they looked to not to trust active record. Okay, we did refactoring for this. First, we unify the model and remove the me medium layer classes and add uh, features to a simple and uh, one single class. Make it rich and modularized active record model. And use the model directly in uh, most in most cases from controller. Okay, two, dreamy method. Dreamy method is ready to do everything. <laughs> Here is the dreamy method do everything for you method. <laughs> it takes a, an identifier and then it provides everything. <laughs> of course, you know the right pattern. You can write it simple methods, separated methods. 
or you can use inheritance sometimes, like this. Mm. But are you sure why this dreamy meso pattern sucks? It's hard to read. You can, um, you can recognize that, okay, you mean doing constant two job here, so it's not really bad. But how about this? <laughs> this is um, the variable. So, oh, I need to check what value is inside. And it, this pattern is very easy to start. You have a method without argument, but uh, no, sometime, uh, uh, sometime, go, <laughs> sorry, but uh, you need to change this behavior in my case. Uh, sorry, I need, I need to change this behavior in my case. So, well, uh, let's add an argument here and add if. This is very, uh, it's not a rare case. I've seen this pattern many times in review code, and uh, code reviews. And it grows like villas. And then in, uh, there is a code here, and using do everything for you. And I need to add a new logic after this. So uh, let's add a new method having the same identifier. Okay, you have now the second method. It takes an identifier. So like this, an identifier travels over methods, classes, and layers everywhere like this. It's a nightmare. And another little but, but pattern here. Enum like hash constant. But it's, it's like this, but it should be like this. Or you can use some enum pattern. Why I think this is bad? Because situation who uh, it's not uh, not exist. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> situation who does not cause an error. So you can't notice something is wrong early, and you need to remember or check what key is available. ID can do nothing for it. And if values are integer, you need to remember both name and value. And it's difficult to search. You can use variable as a key. And hash contents can be changed too easily. And with the combination of dreamy method and this hash in a constant here, so Wandering around looking for something is very painful. So separate things and give them good names. Three, global hash. Global hash. Hash is loved, I think. Everyone likes hash. And hash feels like not scary. You don't have to create a new class. And it's flexible. But it can be a monster. It starts like this. Okay, you are in active users controller and search action, and you receive the parameters and and it's hash. Um, sorry, it's hash, and you you use that hash to search search, or you store a session, store that in session, but it grows like this. In you, you are in another controller now, and you add such similar to the prime, uh, prior one, and this time you receive the search option, but it's including uh, extra options, and you want to make a search and know this is for new users, not active users, and and you. Add a third controller and including extra options and much simpler. And let <laughs> such a know this is for special users. So, in the session or such or such, you face a global hash. Well, you are great data anyway, and everyone can use it. Uh, look some of them, uh, check one key, add something for my friend, 
and retrieve it, and just store all of them in case. So <laughs> nobody knows what contents are expected for each purpose exactly. Chaos. We had a long battle to defeat them. We replaced the part of hash to be an object by each feature, like this. So the conclusion is hash is scary. It's too flexible to be used widely for human beings. <laughs> and for mass housing in one controller. The, it, the problem was like this. There are f three features, but only one controller. Action provides three features. A controller code was like this, so many when, but actually it was worse than this because it was using hash and enum like hash constant. And the better design should be like this, and have separated controller for each features. And you may notice but that this is a combination of two bad patterns, so dreamy method and global hash. And with mass housing in one controller pattern, it is extremely difficult to change just one feature. You need to chase the identifier not to harm other features. Okay, then what to do to avoid these bad patterns? Too many layers. Use active record if you can. Doubt one-to-one -one relation. Think about maintenance costs. Dreamy method. Write a different method for a different need. Doubt adding an argument and if. Extract common parts if you need. And use polymorphism. And step this, stop this pattern in early stage. This is very important. And global hash, feel free to add a new class. Use hashes locally. Conclusion. I showed what you need to do to upgrade Rails from two to four in general. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and then ask me if you need. And I introduced the natural bad patterns in Rails we found. Let's avoid the traps. Thank you. If it, <laughs> thank you. Hi, Asuko san. Uh, so, so Tendla was telling me yesterday actually that he, he wanted to learn how to play mahjong and karta. Yeah. So maybe you can show us how to use your app later. Yeah. So, any questions from the audience? Oh, you all gotten over the the tears and the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have one question. Hello. Uh, can you please uh, tell me how uh, large was in line of codes this application that you upgraded? Uh, can you how many lines of code? Ah. I don't remember the lines, but it was quite big. Mm, so 30, 30 um, I think 30 controllers or um, mm, for 40 models or mm, and that for one application, so much more. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can uh, look up Yasuka, uh, Yasuko's for her code base or something. Yeah, that's quite a lot. <laughs> uh, any more questions? Okay, please. Oh, hello. Uh, do you think it's worth it to upgrade from two to four for Rails? Because I saw that you take about uh, ten, 10 months or... 10 months, ah. Yeah, to upgrade. So do you think it's worth it or do you have any reason to do that? Thanks. Uh, actually, we, we, uh, sorry. 
The question is why we need 11 months? I think. No? Oh, no, 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 no. But uh, we are, uh, mm, yeah. All right. Let's let, look. Ah, sorry. Yeah. All right. Uh, and the question is about schedules and, and the migration only a month only. I'm I'm not sure, but it took just more and less than three months. And we, uh, yeah, refactoring was very hard. But there are many features already. So if we develop this in Scratch, we can't do this in this time. Yeah, I think uh, that answers the question. One more. I went uh, to the same pain as you. But I wonder if you uh, put in production each time you reach a step, or you did everything, then you start uh, pushing to the in production. It's okay. It's asking whether you make changes and then push to production, or mm. you change. Ah, we 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 changed whole things and and then released that because uh, we need for the testing companies and work, so uh, it's, it's easier for us. Okay, I think uh, that wraps up uh, Yasuko's talk. Thank you very Thank much. You very